Good morning, it's Wednesday morning here in Southern California where I am and I wanted to do a follow-up video from yesterday's video on why I don't use Aspire to calculate resin volume. My buddy Mark Lindsay reached out to Vectrica yesterday and they got back to him right away and indicated that it can be used and this is what you need to do. So there was uh, a couple steps, a couple small steps at the end that I didn't realize you would need to do to get the volume of toolpath isolated to a toolpath. Mark shared that with me this morning. Based on Mark getting the information from Vectric so quickly, I thought it would be good for me to share with you that information, especially, actually I felt obliged, especially since just yesterday I had said that it couldn't be done. But I was open-minded and I said, if anybody can figure out how to do it, let me know and I'll pull down the other video and then put the new video in with the right information. So that's what I'm doing right here. You know the old Abbott and Costello skit, if you guys remember him, where he has to say I'm a wrong. I don't mind saying I'm wrong, and uh, I want to share that information with you. Additionally, I had people reach out to me and ask if I would share how I use my spreadsheet in a more step-by-step -step fashion than I've done in the previous videos. Apparently I went too quickly for some folks and I never did really explain what was in each uh, part of that uh, Excel spreadsheet. So I will go ahead and add that to this video. So this video will actually be how you can use two methodologies for calculating the resin volume you might want to use in one of these projects. So it'll cover one, how we do it, how we can do it in Aspire if you have that software and two, how you can do it if you don't have that software, at least one methodology that I use and Shane uses. With that, then let's go forward and talk about how you can get the volume in Aspire. After that, I'll go through the step-by-step -step process of using my spreadsheet. As you can see, I have Aspire already opened, and this is the file I've been using over the last couple days worth of videos, so I'm gonna stick with the same file so that it makes it clear as we walk through how you could apply this to a very specific project. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and calculate and perform the tool path that we want to know the volume of resin on. And we can do that now by going to the tool path tab. And I'm not gonna redefine all of the tool paths. I'm gonna check the depth to make sure it's what I think it needs to be. Let me take a look at white. And we'll do the white toolpath. This is our uh, setup from a previous video where I wanted to only do uh, the color, just show the color. So I'm going to change this to the actual carving depth that I would use. So that's 0.125 inches. Hit calculate. And then I'm going to hit close. And then I'm going to do the white small since we'll be pouring all of the white at the same time. And it's already set up. Remember, I was going to start at 0.02, and I'm going to carve down uh, 0.105, which is the equivalent of 0 0.125, 0 0.125 minus 0 0.02. Calculate. I don't actually need to calculate because it's already calculated. The next step I want to do is preview these tool paths. So I hit preview uh, the tool paths, and I've got white selected. So I'll hit preview visible. And you can see the tool path has been cut. And I'll turn it to the side just so you can see the, the depth. I'm going to go back to the Z view. And the next step I want to do now is go back to the modeling tab or the model selection. I'm going to hit create component from. I'm going to go down and hit com create component from tool path preview. And now we've got a component. And if I go over here, you can see that the component is shown in the toolpath preview. I'm going to quickly go to the two view methodology for those of you that are familiar with the spire. And you can see I've now got a model. You can also see that that model, it's turned the whole block into a single model. And that's where I left off yesterday because I would then hit control, control, alt, control, alt, shift, V. 
and it would give me this volume level and I said that's not right and it is not right so I'm missing two steps we have to do the following steps to get the accurate volume of that toolpath first thing we need to do I'm just going to blow this up since I don't really need to see the 2D model I'm going to right click on the tool bath mode preview I'm going to go from combine mode add to subtract so that's step number one and when I do that you can see it subtracts a whole model from the zero plane go back to Z I'm going to go up to the component properties and you can see the shape height is the exact shape height as the material that we were cutting. Let me go over here to toolpath and if we look up here to set you can see our material is 0.71 inches 0.71 inches. So what I need to do I'm in subtract mode I now need to take the base height minus the same amount as the material and I hit close and now what you see, see if I can turn this so you can see it, is all you're really seeing is the part that we carved. So I'll hit the Z. And now I'll hit the Control Shift Alt V function. And you can see our cubic inches volume is now 1.5. 282 and that is the actual volume of what we just carved the carving depth now let's compare that to the spreadsheet value that I came up with when I do it through my methodology here's the spreadsheet and my spreadsheet value when I calculate the white is closer to 3.9 cubic inches 3.9 cubic inches compared to 1.5 so a little this is a little less than half and you ask yourself well why is that well that's because I'm using a lot of estimation in my actual spreadsheet hit OK so this is actually doing a much finer calculation of just the volume that has actually been carved and therefore is more accurate of the volume being carved. The thing one needs to be careful of is that when you mix your epoxy, getting an exact pour into the just the volume is almost impossible. You're going to have epoxy that you pour on the outside, so there's going to be left over, and there's going to be epoxy needed uh, to take care of any shrinkage because the epoxy will shrink just a little bit as it dries and so using that number one might come up short of the actual epoxy needed for this carve but it is a good starting point to make your decision about how much epoxy you're going to use when pouring this resin so let's talk about a few considerations if you were to use this methodology. If you were to use this methodology, you would want to make sure that you have enough epoxy above the 1.5 cubic inches worth of epoxy to allow for any overage in how you pour the epoxy. Let's switch over to the spreadsheet and I'll walk through how I use that methodology. So here is my spreadsheet. Let me explain the different parts in the spreadsheet so that you understand how I'm using it. I developed the spreadsheet myself. If anybody wants a copy of this spreadsheet, send me an email at generationscustomcreations at gmail.com. Generationscustomcreations at gmail.com. I'll go ahead and put uh, the email on the screen here. This spreadsheet is set up so that I can calculate how much epoxy resin and hardener I'll need for the two types of epoxies that I use. I use upstart epoxy and I use West Simpsons epoxy at this time. This section up here tells me once I know how much epoxy I want in ounces, I put in the total ounces and it calculates the resin in weight. So these are weight calculations which is what I always use for the small amounts of epoxy I use. So for example, if I needed four ounces 
of epoxy, I'd put four in this formula, and it would tell me that I need 2.19 ounces of resin and 1.81 ounces of hardener for upstart epoxy. If I did the same thing for West Systems, it would tell me I need 3.33 ounces of resin and 0.67 ounces of hardener because the ratios are different. Um, and that this, this uh, spreadsheet takes that into consideration. In the lower portion is where I actually calculate the amount of resin I believe I need to fill that part of my project. These are all earlier calculations of different projects that I've had and I just keep them here and don't erase them because it doesn't matter. So I'm going to focus right now. Let me hide all of these sections for now. And focus on the white, which is what we just calculated using the method from Aspire. Many don't have Aspire, so let me show you how I do this using vCarve. I've now opened vCarve using the same file we were using in Aspire, and I'm going to show you how I use my spreadsheet and vCarve together to estimate the epoxy volume I want to mix up. So the first thing I do is I go to the toolpath that I want to select. So in this case, I'm going to use white. So I can come up here and I can isolate all the layers except for white. Now I have my white layers. I then just select all of the white and I go to the resize tool and you can see it estimates that my X is 3.5 and my Y is 9.7 inches. Keep that in mind. X 3.5, Y 9.7. I then switch back to my spreadsheet so my X was 3.58, I rounded it up to 3.6. My Y, which is the length, was 9.7 from looking at the V-carve measurements. I know that I'm carving to a depth of 0.125. That's the flat depth I put into the toolpath. And now I have to estimate how much coverage of this rectangle I've actually covered. Let me go back to V-carve. So yeah, I look at this rectangle and I say to myself, how much of this rectangle is actually going to be covered? And this is experience and guesstimate based on previous pours. How much of this rectangle is actually going to be covered with epoxy? So I come back to my spreadsheet and that's what I put into amount of coverage. And I tend to usually guesstimate high. So in this case, I'm guessing that I'm going to need about 0.9 90%, that is, of that rectangle will have some epoxy on it. And that includes some overpour that I know that I have to do because I, I'm not accurate or good enough to get everything right into the letters themselves. That comes up with a cubic inch of 3.9285. If you recall, the Aspire number was around 1.6, 1.5 cubic inches. So this is almost... Uh, two times, 2.2 times as much in my estimation. So you can see I'm definitely overestimating the coverage inside the actual carving. I then have a conversion factor in my spreadsheet that tells me how much I'm going to need in ounces and I get the final value of ounces. So my ounces for white comes out to be 2.17 ounces of white. I take that value and then I put that up in this area here, and I usually round up, so I'm going to put in here 2.5 ounces. I'll hit enter. I'm using my upstart epoxy calculator, so it tells me that I need 1.37 ounces compared to 1.13 ounces of hardener. And that is what I will mix up using my methodology. Does that mean I'll have some extra resin? Yes. I will have extra resin. I know that I will have extra resin. That works for me because if I run short, and I have run short when I didn't have this methodology, it's almost impossible to match up the colors the way that I mix them, mostly by eye. I'm not using precise calculations and measurements. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. So I want to make sure that I have more epoxy than I need when I'm making my initial mix of epoxy. We just covered two different methodologies by which you could calculate the volume 
of a resin pour so you could determine how much epoxy you're going to mix up. The first one was using a spire and coming up with a very precise calculation of how much volume is in a given tool path you've carved. It estimates what the actual volume is. And you still have to adjust from that level considerably as compared to the spreadsheet that I use, which can be used in VCAR Pro or any other methodology you want to use, in which I estimate the amount given the size of a triangle, rectangle, or circle. Right now I primarily use a rectangle and how much coverage was there. And it's been working really well for me. You will decide which way you want to go and how precise you want to be on the amount of resin. Once again, I would rather have more resin than less. Let me demonstrate how much resin I did have left over when I did the white pour that you've been seeing throughout this video. You can see that that's probably about 0.7 or 0.75 ounces of resin that I wasted in my calculation, but I'm okay with that. As you can see, there was about 0.7 or 0.75 uh, ounces of resin left over. Some might consider that a lot of waste. I don't in the amount of resin that I use for pouring these multicolor epoxy resin inlays. And I've already expressed my uh, perception that I'd rather have some left over than fall short. So I won't beat that dead horse. Actually, I think I've beat it a couple times. I do hope you gain some knowledge that may be useful for you in your multicolor epoxy adventures in this video. I really appreciate the efforts um, by Mark and Shane to reach out to Vectric and I also appreciate the company that Vectric is and how they got back so quickly in helping us understand how we can use Aspire to calculate the actual volume. Once again you will determine which method you want to use. Right now uh, the only software that Vectric has that will calculate the actual volume of a toolpath is Aspire. There has been requests made through multiple people including Mark and Shane to have a calculator put in such that in VCarve Pro you could actually calculate the tool pass and then input a depth of the tool pass and it would give you the volume similar to Aspire does and that's been input to them and to their development team and we'll see what develops from that in the future. I do have a lot of confidence in Vectric in that they are very responsive to input. And so maybe we'll see that in some future upgrade. In any event, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, it would be helpful if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe so that you can get updates in future videos. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful life. And I hope you like what you're doing. And if not, you're able to do something to take care of that.